Hi, this is Dr. Harry. Welcome to the next episode of Healthy Living. And I'm calling this Say Bye to Your Worries. This session will be focused on how to rein in your monkey mind using a technique that I've perfected over the years. And I call that the Buy Toolkit. Please bear in mind, what I'm about to say now does not constitute medical advice. If you have any doubts, please verify them with your doctor before you practice anything that I'm discussing here. I'm basing this on my personal experience in combination with, with what I've read and understood from reading what experts have written about calming the mind. And a lot of this borrows heavily from Buddhism, the Buddhist tradition, and yoga from India. But I've come up with a way to link that Buddhism and yoga with biology, uh, specifically biohacking, eating, and exercise. I've gone through periods earlier on in life when I let my mind run roughshod over me, when petty jealousy and fears, anxieties, and worries dominated my thinking. This is what most humans go through daily. I'm sure some of you listening to this right now will be experiencing the same emotions. You may be thinking of why you're about to quit for your work in the office. You may be anxious about a looming deadline for a project at work. I mean, you may be feeling that your spouse is not listening to what you're saying. He or she may be looking at the phone while talking to you. Or your husband's may, um, or wife may be replying to work emails in the evening. And you're trying to tell him or her something very important. Or your exam's just a week away, but you're nowhere near where you expect to be with revisions and preparation. Oh, why did that guy cut you off in traffic? Uh, is he trying to show off with a new car? And that dress that he's wearing, I mean, it looks like it is in a diesel jean, so it could be a fake. Wow. How did he get promoted so quickly? He must have something going on with the boss. He's surely not smart enough for that position. My friend got laid off his job. What will I do if I lose my job? How will I pay the EMIs on my car? I mean, we are inundated with such thoughts day in, day out. Is there a way out of these worries and anxieties and petty jealousies? Of course there is. We need to first understand that such thoughts are the result of our mind's interpretation of the signals coming from our senses. There's no such thing as worry or anxiety out there. Like a rock in front of you or like a flower, there's no worry or anxiety. Uh, you know, it's not like a chair or a television in front of you. It's just what your brain makes out of the sensory signals coming out of the exterior and also from inside your body. It's what we make of our situation as defined by our sensory apparatus. It's perception and interoception, as they call it, uh, where you know, you're know you trying to make sense of the signals coming from different parts of your body. I, uh, I'll explain this later on during the session. So let's just think of that looming project deadline. What is under your control? Your work contributing to that project? Yeah, of course, and communicating what you've done uh, and where you are right now with your team at the right times, everything else is beyond you. If other team members do not keep to their agreed timelines, or if they produce suboptimal outputs, it's not under your control. Just focus on what you have committed to. Anything beyond that is not for you to worry about. Easy to say, you might think, but you can get yourself to do that exactly by controlling your mind and bring Buddha in. You should ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen if the project deadline slips? You're unlikely to lose your job. You'll still be alive. And if you're married and have a family, they're not going to judge you on this. And their love will more than make up for the negative comments from your abrasive boss. For everything that you feel is going wrong, for every worry, the perpetrator is your mind more than anything else. It's your mind on overdrive, really. Thinking of things that you need not even think of. The, that mental chatter can be tamed. Our forefathers in India, oh, the Indian subcontinent, developed great tools to do this effectively. Use these tools to say bye to your worries. 
And BI is an acronym that I came up with for easily thinking about this toolkit. So B is for Buddha, Y is for yoga, and E is for eating and exercise. Just to be clear here, when I say Buddha or Buddhism, I'm referring to rational Buddhism. That is Buddhism shone of all the supernatural stuff. I do not believe in anything that does not allow the possibility of being experimentally falsified. So no past or future lives here, no heaven or hell, just elements of Buddhism that we can use to our advantage over the 80 odd years or 4,000 weeks or 28,000 days that we are alive. Take only three fourths of those time metrics and we'll be at least 20 by the time we are aware that we have a mind of our own that we can control. This is going to work for you. You can use permutations and combinations of the buy toolkit many times a day for life. Trust me, it's worked for me and so has it for many people who have spoken and written about such practices for over at least a millennium. Now, coming to Buddha, Buddha has been a gift to humanity from the universe. It is indeed great that the fundamental particles and entropy came together to create a thinking machine that has bestowed us with a gift that gives every day and is likely to do so until we can program a mind on silicon or whatever else. At that point, Buddha's musings will hopefully be made part of the kernel of our OS. So it'll just stay there and copy it across all the, the bio life. And, uh, uh, bio robotic lives then on the only thing you need to take away from buddha's philosophy is the ability to get inside your mind and to see your mind from outside it's yes, indeed but because there's no other way to describe it you have to get inside your mind to think from outside of it to see it for what it is yeah so you think about your thinking and you can call it Meta thinking. Uh, the jargon is metacognition, probably, but meta thinking is the term I'm going to use here. Let me introduce you to a few quick techniques that you can use tomorrow to have an easier life. I'll list a few situations you're likely to face frequently and then use some of them to demo the toolkit. When you feel that dread about meeting your boss in the morning, think about why you're feeling that dread. Ask why. It's why, why, why. Is it because you're worried about him taking you to task for some work that you did that not meet his expectations? Or is she always like this? Then ask the next why. Why is he taking such an attitude with you? Has it got something to do with his personal life? Maybe he fought with his spouse on the phone just before you came in. Or is it because you did not get a good night's sleep? Is it because you did not have your usual breakfast? Because you did not have time after getting your son ready for school? Or did you have an argument with your wife just before leaving for work? Is it something to do with your health? You have a tummy ache? Just thinking one level up about the reason you're having a certain emotional worry is enough to make it much more manageable by asking that why question. In many cases, you can totally defang it. So just get your why questions out as soon as you feel that anxiety or worry or fear is overcoming you. And before long, you have it under control. Just the ability to use meta thinking is a great skill that you can develop. This is going to take you some time to develop though, maybe a month of regular use before you automatically engage in this mode whenever you feel that your mind is playing tricks on you. But be aware, it's always your mind playing tricks on you. You will know if you, if you have achieved this ability when next time you hear that your friend has been promoted, you suddenly feel that the guy had no real skills but talked his way up the ranks or licked somebody's bottom to get there. And you realize that it's your mind flipping that green jealousy filter over your thinking. That is when you realize the truth about your mind. Or it could be when you see that neighbor revving up his Porsche and you feel that it's just his inherited wealth of bribe and enriched life that enables it. Before you again realize that the jealous monkey in your mind has been unleashed. I felt all of these and many more for most of my life before I got to even reading stuff that made me understand my mind better. A teeny weeny better, I mean. Now to the yoga bit of the tool. Imagine the situation where you're dreading to go into a meeting because you're the first presenter to go on. Or it could be a job interview or your first date or any other situation where your heart rate's going up just thinking about it. It's pounding. No need to panic. Yoga is at your service. All you need to do is take a few deep breaths. 
Not as simple, but close to it. I'll, I'll explain. Take a deep double inhalation and let that out slowly, as I'm going to show you now. Do that two or three times. And then take a deep breath while counting about six to seven in your mind, and then let out that breath, breath when you're again counting up to six to seven in your mind. So like this. Do that for one to two minutes and your mind should be calm. Your heart probably stopped beating so fast. And this is not original. I borrowed this from James Nestor. I happened to read his book, Breath, and I've included a link to his video uh, in the description to this video, to my video. Uh, and he has that video. I mean, it's not his video. He's being hosted by Peter Diamandis in that video. Um, and if you just watch from the 10th minute on for two minutes, he explains and shows this technique himself. Yeah. So you can hear it from the horse's mouth and see he, he see it being done by James Nestor. He's a great guy anyway, and his book has made a real change in my life. James learned the technique, or at least how the technique works from Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist at Stanford. For more biohacking techniques from Andrew Huberman at Stanford, you can listen to the Huberman Lab podcast. So I've called this a yoga-based technique because what James Nestor is describing here and what Andrew Huberman has connected correctly to neuroscience behind it was being practiced by yogis for millennia. So it is definitely yoga. And I think it falls under the Vipassana technique. Now let us move into the E in the by toolkit. And I'm gonna use just the eating bit of the E, not the exercise bit. Hey, when you feel that tension in the pit of your stomach before the interview, please think of what you ate before. It could have something to do with your energy level. It could have something to do with how you went about the day before you arrived for the interview. If your blood glucose levels are low, you're likely to feel less prepared. It's even been shown that if your energy levels are low, your willpower could fail. Even using your brain to make too many decisions, like choosing what to wear before you came to the interview, could make you dread the interview for no real reason because your brain is fatigued, it's decision fatigued, can't take any more decisions, and you, know, you feel low. So the immediate solution here would be to chew on a sweet snack like a chocolate bar. This is essentially cheating the brain into thinking that it's, there is sufficient glucose in your system. In reality, the sugar will take at least 60 to 80 minutes to reach your bloodstream from your stomach after digestion. However, biohackers have shown that as soon as your brain gets the taste of sugar from your tongue, it'll reset the energy availability switch to on in your system and will allow cells, including the brain's own, into metabolizing more glucose, whatever is available in the blood, into energy as ATP molecules. And this is well utilized by long, long distance runners who do not want to get too much simple sugars in this, into their system or intestines by chewing on a sweet bar or swishing a sweet drink in their mouth before just spitting it off. I myself have done this many times in long runs. And if you really don't want to take that sweet chocolate and you're taking more you know, proteins and fats, during your day, then you know you can do the same thing. You know, you chew on your chocolate bar, just keep it inside your mouth for a couple of minutes, and then just spit it off in the next trash can. Right, caffeine is another thing that you can take, and which comes under eating in the toolkit. It has been shown to improve performance in work, and it translates well into situations like interviews. So have a swig of strong coffee 30 minutes before the interview. It'll help tamp down anxiety before any trying session whether it's an interview or speaking in a podium before an audience or presenting in a group meeting. I'll bring this session to a close here. I think it may have uh, gone too long, but let me recap the stuff I was spouting before switching off. You can say bye to your worries and anxieties using the bye toolkit that I've devised. The B stands for techniques taken from Buddhism, though the rational chunk from Buddha's musings, I mean rational Buddhism, what you can pull out for immediate use is meta thinking or thinking about why you're thinking a certain way and then correcting your course then itself. The why in the toolkit is for yoga-based techniques of which 
just a breathing exercise will get your heart and mind back to calmness in a few minutes. With the E from the buy toolkit, I introduce the eating biohack to help you calm your mind and get into optimal interviewing or speaking or presentation mode by chewing on a chocolate bar or anything with a refined sugar or taking caffeine. And you can spit off the chocolate bar in a trash can after a few minutes, or you can even, you know, eat it if you feel, feel like it. Uh, and, um, and you can get ready for the interview. There are a ton of techniques in the buy toolkit which I do not have the time to discuss during the session. And you wouldn't have the time and patience to watch a long video, I know that. There are many things that you can practice daily that will make you a better person, better prepared to deal with the things that life throws at you, or your mind thinks that are being thrown at it, uh, since it's always just an interpretation. I'll do more episodes on this topic in the future, but in the meanwhile, feel free to message me for more. Um, I'll reply when I have time. And thanks very much for listening. Jai Hind.